This is a story of civil engineering and how it changed the world, of three men who met in a coffee house, of the world of engineering and two centuries of infrastructure, of a world that has seen war and destruction, and new buildings almost beyond belief. It is a story of architects and engineers, of buildings and builders. In 1818, the world was a very different place. The streets, the roads, the people and the landscape of much of today's Britain would have been largely unrecognisable. It was a time when what we now call civil engineering was still something new. These were exciting times. A group of young men were drinking in a coffee house on Christmas Eve and they decided to set up a formal organisation meeting on the 2nd of January 1818 that would represent men and later on women whose feats and engineering achievements would quite literally change the world. The initial meeting laid out a plan. First, that a society be formed consisting of persons studying the profession of a civil engineer. Second, that as much as possible to prevent reserve in the junior members, the ages of admission should not be less than 25 nor greater than 35. Third, that the society shall meet once every week for the purpose of mutual instruction in that knowledge requisite for the profession. Fourth, that from amongst its members the following officers shall be selected, namely three chairmen and two secretaries, one of whom shall be treasurer. On the 25th of January 1820, it was decided that the society needed a president. Thomas Telford was invited. In March, he replied, accepting the office and most generously offering a collection of books that became the core of the society's library. He held office until September 1834. Once the society was established, the battle was on to get a royal charter because recognition by the king would mean that members of the society would be regarded as being members of a profession. In 1828, the Royal Charter was secured and the society became the institution of civil engineers. This was followed by major successes for the profession as Victorian Britain saw engineering projects of unprecedented ambition and scale. Railways, of course, steamship construction, road improvements, improved water supply. But as the 20th century dawned, the world was engulfed by war. And that put the profession of civil engineering on the back burner. The sheer horror of the conflict brought a changed world after the Great War, what would later be known as the First World War. At the end of the conflict, there was rubble and horror, but also a new determination to build a better world. In came assembly lines and electricity, underground railways and modern 20th century road planning. Building became exciting and new, with steel and concrete changing the landscape of the 20th century. After the carnage came creativity. Out of adversity came engineering marvels. This new thinking was informed by architects borrowing from other schools of thought. The 1930s saw changes in materials and how buildings were put up, and different styles that redefined the cities and towns in which people lived, worked and played. But it was not to last for long. The 1930s saw war, with destruction across Europe and the world once again changing the landscape. Civil engineers and their skills will be needed more than ever in the coming years. The impact of the Second World War on civil engineering was more than just the loss of great buildings and structures, for it became, in time, a brand new opportunity to rebuild for all. And with the 1950s and 60s came better, cleaner and smarter ways of working. Materials could be shaped and manipulated with bigger, more powerful machinery. And construction was no longer bound by the old rules of labour, hard toil, blood and sweat. We could employ boring machines that could drive massive new tunnels, 
we could map areas using satellite imagery. And we began to use computers, these new and amazing calculating tools which started to be employed from the early 1970s. And so we entered the final years of the millennium, unsure of the future of the planet, with the power of machines never before seen. And the future beckoned with new challenges and greater opportunities, with civil engineers at the very heart of renewables, of sustainability and the environment, with computing power that could help engineers design and plan. Bigger, taller, wider, longer, more durable and safer buildings of all descriptions than ever before. Today, civil engineers have embraced better working methods and higher standards of safety. Quite simply, we can build better today than before. We can now calculate everything. The speed of wind on a bridge, the flow of water beneath it, the effect of an earthquake on a shopping centre, the weight of a football crowd in a stadium. We have the technology and the computers and the machinery to transform our world for the better, safer and cleaner. But all of that starts and ends with the civil engineer pulling that resource together, seeing what is achievable and making the impossible possible. The institution of civil engineers began in a relatively dark world. Three men started a profession for other men, but things have changed for the better. Women, of course, are now included in a more open and diverse workforce, better able to meet the demands of the modern world. Much of this is due to the power and influence of the institution of civil engineers. Civil engineers and builders transform the world, day by day, week in, week out. And they do it through the people and skills nurtured by the institution of civil engineers. A membership organisation of bright young and old women and men, each of them following the historic trail of their forebears, of the projects that came before them. Of the three men in the coffee house who started the whole thing in motion. The past 200 years have been a whirlwind of major change. At the heart, the identity and the core purpose of the institution of civil engineers is unchanged. The institution of civil engineers continues to make those changes. The organisation leads on providing professional qualifications, on revising the profession. The world of tomorrow is already with us in a landscape of buildings that feel like they have dropped in from science fiction. To quote from a Paul Simon song, we live in a time of miracles and wonder. As materials change and computer modelling becomes faster and more powerful, our skylines and our transportation, our bridges, viaducts and our core infrastructure will change too. The future of engineering will be fast and furious with amazing projects and ideas that we can barely imagine today. But whatever comes, we can be sure it will be better with the institution of civil engineers leading the charge.